So today as we move on, we'll once again be looking at sampling, but this time around we'll be looking at non-random sampling. So there's a couple of non-random sampling techniques for us to get familiar with. And today we're going to move on to opportunity sampling. Now opportunity sampling is also known as convenient sampling, just in case you see that written anywhere. Um, this is a type of sampling where the individuals that are chosen to be part of the sample so the sampling units that we choose, we just choose them based on opportunity. We just choose them based on convenience. We just choose them because they're there. They're right in front of us. This is the kind of sampling technique that you would see if somebody was in a shopping mall and they were asking people to fill in a questionnaire. Just whichever person approached them down the corridor, they would be the person that they would ask to participate in the study they would be the person who filled in their form. So they weren't checking whether they belonged to any strata. They weren't taking any sort of random approach to how they picked people. There was no quota of which type of people. It was just anyone and everyone who stopped to talk to me. They were part of the sample. So if we get back to this example about the cars in the car park, I'm just going to choose them or choose to include them based on the ones that I walked past. So every car that I walk past, these first four black cars are all involved. Then I walk past a red, a purple, and two blues. I've included all of them. I'm looking for a sample size of 12. So I walk past another four black cars, and there I have my whole sample. You might be able to spot some issues here. If I take account of what I have, I have eight black cars, one red, one purple, and two blue. And that in no way represents the proportions that we had in the population to begin with. Yes, there were more black cars than any other, but not in the proportion that we have. We have eight times as many black cars as red cars. And that's not true of the population. We have four times as many black cars as blue cars. And that's not true of the population either. So actually, black cars here are overrepresented in my sample. But that's what happens with opportunity sample. We just take whatever comes up in front of us. Let's actually go over all of the advantages and disadvantages. I think you can see that this was probably the quickest of all the sampling techniques. It is easy to carry out. And that usually tends to mean it would be inexpensive in terms of financial cost. The disadvantages, as I just described, is we're not likely to get a representative sample it's not going to reflect the population structure in any meaningful way. And actually, some of the small strata, some of the small categories may not even feature in the sample at all. Now, as I said before, it is down to the interviewer to kind of pick whoever's coming towards them. So if they're going to be swayed towards a certain type of person, if they're more interested in talking to women, or they're more interested in talking to men, they're more interested in talking to tall people, they're more interested in talking to sporty people, or people who are dressed in a particular way, then that can actually add some bias to the sample as well. So it is highly prone to interviewer bias. Um, in as much as the person who the interviewer has chosen to be involved. And as we discussed with other non-random sampling techniques, non-responses don't really get recorded. They don't get picked up. If somebody's walking to me and I ask them whether or not they can take part of my survey and they say no, I don't really record uninterested person or I don't really record zeros for all of their answers or blanks for all of their answers. It's almost like it never happened in the first place. Okay, and we're just about finished, but before you move on to some practice questions, let's take a quick look at the specification and exactly what it is that students are expected to be able to show, exactly what the examiners are anticipating you will be confident on. While you read through that, I want to quickly remind you that it will be sensible for you to come back and watch this video at a later date, maybe come back in two or three weeks or before an assessment. And as you watch through the second time round, because you've done your practice, a lot of what you go through here should resonate with you much more. And you have a chance to really embed your understanding of the difficult concepts, the ones that have been flagged up as A-star.